Come on, Moffrey. Hop on the math train. Uh, yeah, okay. I know. I'm being too silly. Hey, my friends. Welcome to Lesson 2.5. It is another fourth grade go math. Yes. Fourth graders rock. And we're going to be looking at multiply using the distributive property. Oh, my goodness. What an important concept. I cannot stress that enough. So distributive property may sound very strange. It is. Yet... It's something that you really, really need to understand well in math because you'll be using it again and again and again. It will never go away. It'll be like Waldo. He will keep showing up in every little picture you ever look at. Just kidding. Okay. Well, what's our purpose? Our purpose, my friends, today, that's our essential question. It says, how can you use the distributive property to multiply a two-digit number by a one-digit number? Okay, so this is a really, really important lesson. So, And look at it. It's an investigate. Woo, yeah. That means hands-on, my friend. Those little purple hands. Hands-on. Get your hands in there. All right. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to need some materials. If you have these at home, at school, we should pull them out. That's right, because you're going to need coloring pencils, and you're also going to need grid paper. All right? So if you don't know what that is, you can see in the picture there, that's kind of an example of a little section of grid paper. All right. Now, it does say you can use the distributive... It says you can use the distributive property to break apart numbers to make them easier to multiply. I like that. It does say the distributive property states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add-in by the number and then adding the products. And I know this probably went oh, right over your head, right? I mean, whoa, 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 Mr. War, I was with you until what are you talking about? So let's go ahead and look at this. This is A. Outline a rectangle on the grid to model 6 times 13. I'm going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, I put my rectangle on the grid and it's to model 6 times 13. So here is 6. Up here I have 13. Okay. 6 times 13. But it says in B, it says think of 13 as 5 plus 8. So we're going to just think of 13 as 5 plus 8. Okay. So we can break apart the model to show 6 times 5 plus 8. And this is label and shade the smaller rectangles used two different colors. Okay. So it did say 5 plus 8. So what we need to do is we just need to count over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so you can see I put in my line, I broke it apart. I put 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I have my 8 over here, which is 13 across. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put 5 down here, and I'm going to put 8 over here. It's still 13 going all the way across. And I want you to think of that as 5 plus 8, because that's what we're doing here. That example over here says 6 times 5 plus 8. They wrote it just like that. 6 times the sum of 5 and 8. We're doing the same thing, because this would be the same thing as 6 times 13. I want you to see that connection. We just broke it apart. Now, it does say label, and I did do that, and shade the smaller rectangles. Use two different colors. All right, let me get two different colors. Let's see if this will work. Ooh, I got like a green. Cool. Yeah. I know. Isn't this fun? This is the best part of the job. Okay, all right. Let me see here if I can stay within my lines. Using these electronic tablets. Not quite the same as like a real coloring. Okay, ooh, it almost got darker now because I went over it again. Works for me. Okay. And then we need another color. Ooh, yeah, I like this color, too. I'm not sure what color it is. It looks like it's somewhere in between a red and a pink. And I know some of you guys out there say, I know what color it is, Mr. War. It's something really weird, like a name color. I don't know. Okay, so we go on to the next step. It does say, use the distributive properties. It says, find the product each smaller rectangle. Find the product each smaller rectangle represents. Then find the sum of the products record your answer. So we have one product here, but we're going to take 6 times 5. So 6 times 5 is going to be equal to 30, right? That's that first smaller rectangle. The next one is the 6 times the 8. And of course, 6 times 8 equals 48. Yep, know my times table. It says then find the sum of the products. So if we have 30, Plus 48, because they're both sums. And this is record our answer. Now we have 78. 
All right, look pretty good to you? Yeah, I'm just looking up and kind of checking my work. Now it's just model six times 13 again. Think of 13 as a different sum. Break apart the model to show six times blah, 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 blah. No, I'm sorry, blank, blank. Find the product each smaller rectangle represents. Then find the sum of the products. Record your answers. Oh, cool, I get to do my own. Yay, okay, what do I want to do? Let me see. First, let me get my rectangle. Well, I have my rectangle, which is the six times 13. I also have my line that's going to break that six times 13 model apart. So what are two add-ins that equal 13? Mm, I like, let me go with four and nine. Yeah, four plus nine is equal to 13. So let me do that one. So make sure I have one, two, three, four. Okay. And that means there has to be nine over here. We'll double check here. Ooh, looks like I'm not quite on my line here. I like it to be exact. That's right. Can I shrink that a little bit? There we go. Woo! All right. So now I have my four and then I have my nine. Okay. Now it says, so I'm going to put my two add-ins in there. That's an add-in. One add-in is going to be four. The other add-in is going to be nine. Woohoo! Find the product each smaller rectangle represents. So if we did our six, I'm going to do exactly how I did it last time. Six times 13. And I'm going to write down my numbers here. Four. And then I'm going to just put, put a little plus sign in. And then plus nine. Okay, so this, I know I have the same thing. So I'm going to have 6 times 4, which is equal to 24. I'm going to have 6 times 9, which is equal to 54. And now it says I'm going to add my sums together. I have 24 plus 54, which is equal to 78. Ooh, don't you just love how things work out? I do. I really do. That's why I love math. They just work out. And it's interesting because look at all the different combinations. You could do 13. You could go real crazy and just say six and seven, right? Because six plus seven is equal 13. So you could do your six times six plus seven. And this is what we're doing. You are going to take that very first smaller square. You would have six times six, which is equal to 36. Then you have six times seven, which is equal to 42. And when you add them together, woo, 78 again. Woo, it's like magic. The magic pen. Woo. Now, let's go to the next page. You see, now they wanted to start drawing some conclusions. And it says, explain how you found the total number of squares in each model in steps B and C. Well, I'm just going to say it and then I'll type my answer in. But I would say, first of all, I just simply broke 13 into two smaller numbers that had a sum of 13. And I'll use the second model, which was where I took the 9 and the 4. So I broke 13 into 9 and 4, two smaller rectangles. And then I simply multiplied each add-in by the number 6. Finally, I added the products. And they're actually called partial products. I'm sure this, these lessons are going to call them that pretty soon. But they're called partial products because it's not the whole thing. I took those two sums, added them together, and I got my answer. Let me write that down for you. Okay, maybe something like that. It, it could be said in so many different ways, but that's one possible answer. Next, it says, compare the sums of the products in steps B and C with those of your classmates. What can you conclude? I can't really check with anybody on that one there. What could you say? Mm. If I had broken the 13 into 4 and 9, but maybe another person in the class broke it up into, you know, 5 and 8, then you can see that we would end up with still the same answer. We would still get 78. So I would just say you would get the same. Okay, that's just one way you could say it. Again, there's other ways you could solve it. What can you conclude is really the question. And that's pretty much our conclusion that we're going to get the same answer. It just depends how the 13, that the 13 can be broken up differently. Okay, now it says think smarter. To find 7 times 23, is it easier to break apart the factor 23 as 20 plus 3 or 15 plus 8? Explain. Well, I would say it would be easier to break apart 23 is 20 plus 3 because it would be easier to multiply because I can just do multiples of 10. 20 plus 3, it would be just easier. 7 times the 20, the multiple, I could think of 7 times 10 and then 7 times 20, it'd be easier to do it that way. 
let me write my notes down. Okay, so I think it would be much easier to break 23 apart as 20 plus 3 because I can use mental math to multiply 7 with multiples of 10, which is your 20, rather than trying to multiply it with 15. There you go. That's what I think. Okay, now it says we're going to make connections. Cool. There's another hands-on so you can get out your base 10 blocks. Cool. It says another way to model the problem is to use base 10 blocks to show 10s and 1s. So it says use base 10 blocks, step 1. Use base 10 blocks to model 6 times 13. And you can see we have 6 groups of 13. 6 rows of 110 and 3 ones. You see that? So 6 rows of 110 and 3 ones. You can see there's 6 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of 13. Okay. Step 2 says break the model into 10s and 1s. Here it's showing you 6 times 110. And so then that would be 6 times 10. Which here we have. 60. Here we have six groups of three ones, or simply six times three, which is 18. Ooh, I like this. Step three says add the tens and the ones to find the product. So we're going to be adding those two numbers together. Well, 60 plus 18, here it is, is 78, which is the answer that we were hoping to get. So six times 13 equals 78. Finally, it says in step two, the model is broken into two parts. Each part shows a, ah, there's that word I just used earlier, partial product. Each part shows a partial product, partial, which is not a full. It's part of a, a, a full, like a, a whole part. We call it partial. The partial products are 60 and 18. So this is considered, oh, I forgot my zero here. I just now noticed that, ah. You guys are all watching like, Mr. War forgot the zero. <laughs> you guys are good. Okay, so it should be 60. And that's a partial product and 18, woo is a partial product. So that gives us our 78. Those are partial products. Anyway, woohoo, man, look at that. Woo, another video here and gone. Oh no, I can't believe it. Hey, you know what? I'm so glad you guys come along and join me in this mad expedition. Woohoo, I am at your service, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.